guys, today I want to chat with you about my favorite powders. I've done similar videos that were a little bit more specific before, but today I just want to chat with you about the powders that I reach for the most for a variety of reasons. So it could be under eyes, I might like them on both my under eyes and my face, I might like it just for my under eyes, it's mattifying, it's a powder foundation. So just kind of a run through of a bunch of powders I like and a couple that are really great and natural. As always, I will have links down below to powder foundation reviews, all kinds of other good information. If you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to subscribe. As always, I'll have a mix of high end and drugstore too. You can come to expect that on my channel because I like everything. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's start out with a drugstore powder that I have loved for years. They've since changed the packaging, but this is one of my favorite powders of all time. I recommend it to people all the time because it's a great touch up powder, it's affordable, it's readily available, and it is the CoverGirl Outlast All Day Powder. This is the old version, like I said, I think it is black now. I believe it only comes in two shades, if not might have a translucent, but it really doesn't have that much uh, color to it. I use the shade Medium Deep. Maybe they have ex extended, extended the shade range, but this powder is so good. If you have oily skin, this is a powder that I've absolutely not only noticed a difference upon putting it on my face to mattify, but actually in keeping the oils at bay because, you know, most powders are, or a lot of powders are going to be matte on application, but does it actually help throughout the day? I can definitively say yes. This is a great one. I've used it also to set a makeup look, but it can also be a great purse touch-up item if you do need to blot. So such a great item, and I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, but it's been a staple in my collection for years. A powder that I discovered more recently that I absolutely love, but is definitely on the higher end side of things, is from Charlotte Tilbury. These are the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powders. I have it in two different shades. I have shade number two, which which I love for under my eyes. I believe it comes in four shades. Again, it doesn't have a ton of pigmentation, uh, so you can kind of get away with a bunch of different shades. Really soft, really beautiful, but it's still like a satiny matte. I know I was talking about recently in a video talking about the NYX high gloss powder, like that had like shimmer in it. This is like airbrush in the fact that it makes things look blurred and smooth. If you have a drier skin type, if you have texture, these, this, these are beautiful powders. On my face, I use the shade three. So these powders won't really do a whole lot for, like they're gonna mattify in the sense that like if you have a bit of like foundation that's looking a little bit shiny, like it is a powder, it's gonna take down some of the shine, but it really is specifically for kind of blurring, setting the look. It's not necessarily gonna do a whole ton for longevity. I don't find like it wears off or does anything like that, but just to know, because I know a lot of times I'll always get questions like, is it good for oily skin? It's not that it's bad for oily skin, it's just like not gonna have the oil controlling um, properties that maybe the cover girl does. This was my favorite powder foundation for a very long time. I've gone through a countless amount of these and it is the MAC Studio Fix powder. This is a classic. Uh, I am NC42 at MAC but for some reason I would wear NC43 in the powder. That's the only MAC foundation that I ever deviated from. For some reason I think it was a little less yellow perhaps uh, but this is fabulous. It is so versatile. It acts as a great powder foundation, whether you want to do a lighter coverage to something a little bit more, you know, leaning towards full in terms of a powder coverage, or it also does a great job on top of like a BB cream if you want to add a little coverage. If you really want to set a look, you're going to get mattifying, you're going to get longevity. It's a great multitasking product. I know, you know, MAC obviously is not the brand that it used to be, but that being said, I still do think they have some great solid core products. And something like this is something that I really love. I've tested a lot of powder foundations over the years, and this is still one of the best that I've tried. I haven't come across many that are able to be used in a multitude of ways that don't oxidize, that are, you know, like it, it's just a really, really solid powder. Up next, I have an iconic powder that I was never really that into until they launched the shade, and it is the Laura Mercier Translucent Honey Powder. So they have, of course, the original Translucent, which I'm not a huge fan of any of those types of powders. I do have one that I'm gonna mention here today, but I just find on my skin tone and the look, it's never what I want it to be. I feel like it's better for, like it's not like every day, but this powder is really nice. I love the honey shade. Um, I primarily do use this under my eyes, so this will last a literal lifetime. Super smoothing, it is brightening. I'm very particular on the powders under my eyes. Like face, like face powder I'm still particular on, but under eye powder for sure. I like it to have some brightness, a little bit of pigmentation in there. I can use this on my whole face, but generally I don't. Uh, the deeper shade, is too deep for me so this was a really really good one it doesn't have like any shimmer in there just like a nice yellowiness and i'm honestly surprised it, that it took them so long to come out with it but i'm very glad they did 
why don't we talk about my only kind of loose translucent powder. Uh, first of all, I don't love translucent powders and I don't love loose powders. So if I'm mentioning something that's loose and translucent, it's hard to say, that means that it's actually good because it's just like, it's just inconvenient by comparison. But this is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Powder. It is their mattifying loose setting powder. I think that this is such a good one if you have oily skin. I really love it. Uh, I specifically love this to use to put on my primer then to put on powder, then put liquid foundation over it. If you've never done that and you have really oily skin, really recommend putting down a primer, a little bit of powder, then put your liquid over it. Incredibly uh, oil blocking, incredibly oil blocking. Uh, does a great job with like keeping oils at bay. And because the pot powder is so micro fine, it really does a good job under makeup. Also does a great job on top of makeup. I've never used it under my eyes. I use it on my face. It doesn't cause a bunch of white cast. Is it scented? I think it is. I haven't actually used it in a little while because I'm testing new things. Yeah, it's scented like peaches, which doesn't bother me. doesn't linger on my face. Uh, I like the packaging. I think it's pretty, but of course, like in general, powder to me is always going to be messier than something pressed, but a really great option if you have oily skin. So my current favorite powder foundation is actually from Too Faced. I really love this. I, oh, I loved their um, cocoa powder foundation. Do you remember that? I would say this is similar. I think they've changed the name of it on the Sephora website, but it is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Complexion Powder. I use this in warm sand. Similar to the MAC, I feel like this is incredibly versatile. I can use it on its own for a quick, like no makeup, low makeup day. I can use this to set a full face look if I wanna add a little bit of matteness, a little bit more coverage. It works amazing over BB creams, over tinted moisturizers. I think it's awesome. And actually kind of similar to MAC, I feel like people sort of roll their eyes at Too Faced a little bit lately, but their core products, their complexion products, I will stand by them because the concealer, the Born This Way foundation, and the Born This Way powder are phenomenal. So I will overlook the Dusty Rose neutral palettes for now. I've got another drugstore powder here that I really love that I feel like doesn't get a lot of talk. Rimmel has their Instamat, the Stay Matte powder, but I almost never hear anybody talk about good old clear complexion. This is the clear com clear complexion powder uh, and I really like this. This is transparent but it has like a like a beiginess to it. It's not like a stone white and I think that's why it works really well for me. It is super smooth. So smooth, so finely milled that I think it's able to like blend in with my skin really well in combination with the fact that it's not a straight up white. Uh, this is not mentioned very often, but you get a ton of product in here. You get 16 grams, which is a lot. I think it only comes in the one shade and you'll probably find it like along the bottom of the Rimmel display, but if you haven't checked it out, it's actually very good. So I want to point it out to you. I would say this would be suitable for um, normal combo oily. It's not like super mattifying, but it's also doesn't have that same smooth, um, like satiny finish that perhaps the Charlotte Tilbury does if you have a drier skin type, but really, really love it for like normal to oily. This is a powder that I tried recently that, dare I say, wowed me. I'm sorry. It is the Glossier Wowder. I remember when this launched, Jackie Ina did a video on it without saying what it was. And then I feel like it launched, I guess shortly after that, but that was years ago. I finally tried it. I did a full face of Glossier, which I will link to down below. I like that they did this. They said it's in the shade G5 to G7. I can't remember what shade I was in the in the liquid, but it is, I think I was G5. But if you watch that video, if you're curious about this powder, I recommend you watch that video because I tried their skin tint and I was like, mm, I don't know, I look a little greasy. It's a little whatever. When I put on this powder, louder. <laughs> I hate myself, but honestly, it's a beautiful powder. Comparable, I would say, to the Charlotte Tilbury in the sense that it's something that I feel like isn't on the mattifying lock it all inside. It's more on the set the look, looks a little bit more natural, friendly to texture. You can get a couple of shades in there. It doesn't need to be a perfect shade match because it's it has um, it doesn't have full pigmentation. It does have a little bit annoying packaging. Like again, this is not my preference, but if it is gonna be loose, I would prefer it to be like this with the little netting there. It's not the end of the world. Uh, and obviously like press versus loose, that will change the formula. So like I get it. But yeah, I really, really like this. 
even if you do have oily skin, it is a potential option, but I just say that it's not going to like necessarily really lock everything into place, but it does do a good job. I wore it with that Glossier skin tint. My makeup looked good at the end of the day. I've worn it with a bunch of other foundations and I've been reaching for it a lot. I have another powder here that I enjoy to use both under my eyes and on my face. This is another powder that is iconic, has been out forever, and they finally released a new version. So I liked the original of this, but again, I feel like it's a little bit more a little bit less of a day-to-day -day powder for like average consumer in my opinion. It's the Derma, Derma Blend powder. So you know they have their iconic translucent powder that they're like setting their super full coverage on the guy with all the tattoos, you know, you've seen the ads. But then they launched this and it is not only a banana powder but it's the illuminating banana powder. So a little bit of a different texture to their original formula. So of course you're getting that banana color, not super deep but satisfactory to me. And that luminosity, it's not shimmer, it's not glitter, like it's Derma Blend, you know, they are a, are they a medical, like I, I, I believe, you know, like they're a serious brand, like they're not just sh shoving chunks of glitter into things. I really love it under my eyes, I like it on my face, it gives that soft look, it never looks too powdery, looks really beautiful under the eyes. I like that I can use it both under my eyes and on my face so that I'm only reaching for uh, two po one powder instead of two. And again, if you have an oilier skin type, you can use this, but you are going to get a little bit of... I won't say luminosity, but there, it, it, there's not like a flatness when you put it on your face. You get a little bit of something, but it also has that blur. It looks really great. Um, really love it. And again, you're getting a ton of product in here. As for packaging, not my favorite because you get a ton, like there's so much powder here in the thing and then I got to tap it and then I got to tap it and you know, but it's still here. So if you have a packaging that I don't enjoy and I'm still including you in a favorites video, that means you're pretty special to me. And then the last one, quick mention, I actually rediscovered this recently. It's been out forever, but again, I didn't reach for it because it is loose. Here I am being like, I don't like loose powders. And then I talk about one, two, three, four, five loose powders. But this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. And I really like this. I think this is my favorite powder of Maybelline's. I used to love, actually, I was Skyping or whatever with my friend the other day, and she was using the Maybelline Oh, what was that collection? Do you remember it was like white and blue? There was a white compact with blue writing. Like, I don't think it was Super Stay. It was something, but that powder was so good. That was my favorite Maybelline powder. I tried the Fit Me Pressed, I liked it, um, but this is my favorite. It says it's mineral-based, natural look, and again, similar to some of the other ones, this would be a powder that I would think would be a little bit more on the, like it just blurs really nicely. It has a good shade range. You could pick up translucent or a lighter shade for under your eyes. You could pick up a skin tone one, a little bit chunkier in terms of packaging, but a great drugstore option and something that is a little bit overlooked perhaps. It's been out for a while. I love the Fit Me foundations. Didn't like the Fit Me concealer, but Fit Me loose is nice. And I did like, I, I mean, I did like the Fit Me um, matte and poreless powder. I think I went through one or two of those years back, but more recently loving the Fit Me Loose. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to let me know down below what your favorite powders are. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJeanYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!